Good day, everyone. Welcome to this session of the World Design and Engineering um, Lessons. We'll be talking about um, the fundamentals of casing design. Second, this is the second module of it. In this first module, we spoke about types of um, casing. In this particular module, we'll be speaking about um, casing setting depths. So jumping right straight into it. Um, yeah, this is so this is pretty much where we are. We'll be talking about casing setting depth. It is very important that we optimize the casing setting depth of every casing that we plan to set because of the keyword subsidence. Because if the casing is not properly, if we don't select a very compact depth where we set this casing prior to cementing it all the way to surface, it is possible that that casing assembly might subside. And if that happens, we'll lose the structural integrity of the well bore. So jumping right straight into it let me just get out my pointer so everything we're going to discuss will be doing on this particular slide on this particular chart so to the far left you we have our lithology um so this is the gamma ray the uh, lithology the gamma ray log showing the lithology so moving all the way to the left when it goes this way it pretty much tells you that you're in shale and when it builds in it tells you that you're in sand so the higher it is the more um shaly the 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 formation is and um the chart we have in the center is the is the chart showing the depth versus the equivalent mode density and on this on that particular chart there's a plot of the pore pressure and the fracture gradient then to the far right are the types of um, casing joints that we will be setting. That's the conductor, the surface casing, the intermediate casing, and the production casing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pay very good attention to the chart in the center. That's the chart showing the depth versus the equivalent mode density. There are two major lines we'll be looking at here. The pore pressure line, which is the one to the far left. That is this line where we have currently have our cursor, this particular line and the line to our far right that is the fracture gradient chart so this chart here the fracture gradient or what you might call the minimum horizontal stress line that is when that line when it when that fractures we begin to incur losses and that is the the line we don't want to go past because when you go past that line you will induce losses and you start to have loss circulation so because we don't want that to happen we kind of create a safety factor some use 0.2 some use 0.5 below that line so that we kind of stay below that line that line when drawn we call it the kick margin for the pore pressure which is the line we must always stay above because when you go below that line there is the propensity for you to take a kick and when you take a kick you lose the overbalance on the wall ball and have hydrocarbons come to surface so on, you have to always stay above this line so we have a safety margin above that line and that line we'll call the trip margin so usually wall ball is designed from the top to the bottom sorry from the top from the bottom to the top so and that's why you see the a here so we start from that the 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 the, the minimum value of the trip margin and go all the way up and where it touches the kick margin is where is assumed that we should have set our first casing that is after the last casing on bottom so go from a to b you can see it corresponds to this point then you stretch the next line take it from the trip margin and stretch it all the way up. There you should have another casing before the conductor casing at the top. So, but again, we don't just do this assuming, I mean, taking just this into consideration. You also have to look at the lithology, paying very strong attention to the, the sands that you tend to produce because looking at this, this is the sand that we, we intend to produce. So. We see that this this that we've drawn here kind of suits the design that we want because we're able to set our intermediate casing to isolate the last shaly sand before we drill the production zone which goes ahead to um expose the hydrocarbon sands then we go ahead to run the production casing which will be perforating 
to expose this particular hydrocarbon sand here so the design that we have is kind of fit for purpose but also it doesn't just end here there's a keyword kick tolerance which is the maximum amount of um fluid you can take into the well bore and you can circulate it out without fracturing the last casing shoe that also is also taken into cognizance when you are setting all these cases so we don't just um say okay you, you you have your pore pressure you have your fracture gradient you draw the kick margin you draw the trip margin then you start drawing lines you also take all these things i mentioned into cognizance so you look at the lithology which will have you to your far left and you also pay attention to the kick tolerance so when you finish drawing out these lines and you go ahead to calculate the kick tolerance for all the whole sections there is a minimum amount of volume that you are allowed to take per section so that you can circulate out without fracturing your last casing shoe for large hole sections if it's below 50 barrels you would have to optimize that casing septic depth for deeper sections where you expect for deeper sections and smaller casing joints and for smaller holes and for smaller hole sizes usually between 20, 20 to 30 barrels and if it's below that you have to think for a way, you have to think of a way to optimize the casing depth, the casing depth where you plan to set it. But also, like I said, pay strong, pay strong attention to the lithology where you'll be setting that casing shoe. Like as you are looking, as we as we see here, this particular intermediate casing will be set in very competent shield. Up here, we also see that the, this the surface casing is also going to be set in very good shield. So which kind of shows us that this the well integrity of the structural integrity of this well bore is solid and we will not be having any fear of subsidence so thank you very much everybody thank you for following these lessons to the end in the next module we'll go ahead to be looking at the different data that we have to pay attention to while going ahead to design casing thank you once again for following us on this channel do not forget to like do not forget to share do not forget to subscribe See you in the next module. Bye for now.